Hello, my dear students. I hope all of you are doing well. I'm Dr. Salah Shaheen, Professor of General Surgery, Aslaini Hospital, Cairo University, Egypt. Welcome back to my channel, General Surgery Notes for Dental Students. Our topic today is hemorrhage. In this video, I'm going to present the basic knowledge about hemorrhage in a simple and illustrated way. Many photos and illustration will be included to make the subject clear. I hope after watching this video, you will be able to diagnose the type of hemorrhage and to estimate the amount of the blood loss, as well as to know the principle of management. Let us go. Enjoy the video. Hemorrhage or bleeding is defined as escape of the blood outside the cardiovascular system. It may be life-threatening condition if not controlled in time. Causes include traumatic hemorrhage that may be due to wounds, for example, simple abrasions, hematoma, cut and lacerated wounds, and many other types of wounds. Bleeding may occur in body cavities following trauma, as intracranial hemorrhage after a trauma, internal hemorrhage after abdominal trauma, The hemorrhage may be also due to medical diseases like bleeding disorders, which may be congenital as von Willebrand disease and hemophilia. Or it may be acquired like DIC, liver failure, vitamin K deficiency, etc. Another cause of bleeding can be Excess intake of medicine like antiplatelets, aspirin, clavets, anticoagulant, injectable as heparin or oral like warfarin. Hemorrhage can be classified in different ways. Hemorrhage can be classified according to the bleeding vessels. So it may be an arterial bleeding if the injured vessel is an artery or it may be venous when a vein is cut. The last type is capillary hemorrhage. The arterial bleeding is a fast blood loss. It occurs in jets synchronous with the heartbeats. The blood is bright red in color as shown in the following video. Control of arterial bleeding is not an easy job and may necessitate proximal tourniquet. As regards venous bleeding, the blood flow is slow and steady, it is not pulsatile, and the blood is dark red in color. The venous bleeding is easily controlled by just elevation of the injured part or by application of a simple bandage. The capillary bleeding is just an ooze of blood, which is bright red in color. It is usually self-limited unless the patient is hemophilic. At that time, it may cause a serious bleeding. Clinically, hemorrhage is classified into revealed or external and concealed or internal. The revealed hemorrhage is visible as bleeding wounds, abstraxis or bleeding from nose, bleeding gums, hematemesis from bleeding peptic ulcer, hemopsis which is bleeding with coughing, etc. The concealed hemorrhage is invisible such as the bleeding contained within a body cavity. For example, intracranial hemorrhage, blood in the pleural cavity or hemothorax, blood in the peritoneal cavity or hemoperitoneum, retroperitoneal hemorrhage or hematoma, etc. 
or vascular bleeding, for example, rupture aortic aneurysm, limb vascular injury with intact skin. Another example is fracture hematoma in close time of fractures. The amount of blood loss at the fracture site is approximately 125 milliliter in isolated rib fracture, quarter to half a liter in fracture radius or ulna, and so on. With fracture femur, the blood lost at the fracture site may be up to two liters. Retroperitoneal hematoma is usually massive and occurs in fractured pelvis. Post-operative hemorrhage. It can be primary, reactionary, or secondary hemorrhage. This is according to the onset in relation to polish. The primary hemorrhage occurs during the intraoperative period due to injury of the blood vessels. It should be controlled. Refer to the management for further details. The reactionary hemorrhage is delayed and occurs within 24 hours postoperatively. It is usually due to dislodgement of a clot or slippage of a ligature or missed vessel injury due to intraoperative hypotension and vasoconstriction. The precipitating factors are normalization of the blood pressure during the recovery from anesthesia and rise in the venous pressure due to puffing or vomiting post-operatively. Clinically, it presents as a hematoma or bleeding at the operative site. This necessitates exploration of the operative field and control of the bleeder if there is. Secondary hemorrhage usually occurs within 7 to 14 days after the operation. The time may be longer or shorter. It is due to sloughing of the vessel wall from the spreading infection. The precipitating factors are, of course, infection, pressure necrosis, such as done by a drain, or malignancy, which is another important factor. Clinically, secondary hemorrhage has a warning sign, which is a bright red stain appearing on the dressing, followed by a sudden severe hemorrhage which may be fatal. In addition, there is clinical manifestations of post hemorrhagic and septic shock. The prognosis is poor, most likely due to shock, post hemorrhagic, and septic. Disseminated intravascular coagulopathy, BIC, and multiple organ failure, MOF. Eventually, leading to increased mortality. The principles of management of secondary hemorrhage are number one, antibiotics. It should be given by the parenteral route. Also, it should be broad spectrum to cover a wide range of bacteria and better to be given as combination. One of the common combinations is cephalosporin aminoglycosides and metronidazole or flagyl. Number two, fresh blood transfusion. Corrected the coagulopathy resulted from consumption of the coagulation factors. Also, replace the blood loss. Number three, take the patient to the theater and explore the operative field. The bridement is done. Remove the necrotic tissue. Also, trial at control of bleeders, short of making injury as the tissues are friable. In most of the cases, an effective method is application of local tamponade. For example, loose goes back in the field. Balloon of a foolish catheter may be used to stop secondary hemorrhage after hemorrhage. Hemorrhage is classified according to the rate of blood loss into acute hemorrhage and chronic hemorrhage.
the acute type is variable in amount and may be massive. More importantly, it occurs over a short period of time. Usually, it occurs following trauma or during major surgery. The chronic hemorrhage is a slow type of bleeding that is usually little in amount and is repeated for a long time. For example, bleeding bites, bleeding peptic ulcer, or bleeding fibroids in a female. The blood volume in these patients remain normal, but the blood loss is replaced by plasma, which is a compensatory mechanism. The patients become anemic. This anemia is microcytic hypochromic anemia. This anemia should be corrected before performing the required surgery. Hemorrhage may be classified into surgical hemorrhage and non-surgical hemorrhage. The surgical bleeding occurs due to a direct injury, including surgical trauma. It is amenable to surgical control or other techniques such as embolization. The non-surgical hemorrhage is a general ooze from a raw surface. It is due to coagulopathy. It cannot be stopped by surgical means except by backing. The treatment requires correction of the coagulation abnormalities. Another way of classification depends upon the volume of the blood loss. There are four classes. In an adult weighing about 70 kg, if the blood loss is up to 15%, that's to say 750 milliliter, it is considered class 1. In class 2, the loss is from 15 to 30%. This means up to 1,500 milliliter of blood. If the loss is up to 40%, which is about 2 liters of blood, it is class 3. And if more, it is considered class 4. The different parameters in the four classes to assess the class of bleeding include the mental status, the condition of the skin, the capillary refill time, clinical monitoring as the pulse, the blood pressure, the respiratory rate, and the urine output. In class one, the patient is alert but anxious. With progress, the patient becomes drowsy and may lose the conscious level in class four. The skin becomes pale, cool, and clammy. This occurs starting from class 2, and in class 4, it is very cool. The pulse shows tachycardia, but not more than 100 per minute in class 1. In class 4, it may be 140 or more. The blood pressure is almost maintained especially in the early classes. But when shocks start to occur, the blood pressure becomes low, especially the mean arterial pressure. Normal capillary refill time is less than two seconds. It is prolonged with blood loss and becomes undetectable in class four. The table shows the changes in urine output and the respiratory rate in relation to classes. Physiological response to hemorrhage includes measures to stop bleeding and measures to maintain effective circulatory volume. Refer to the shock video for further details. Here is a summary of these changes. The vessels, when injured, undergo vasoconstriction with antimal retraction, trying to stop the bleeding. The platelet adheres to the injured vessels and start to aggregate and pour platelet blood. This is augmented by fibrin. While at restoration of the blood volume occurs through sympathoadrenal stimulation, by a direct effect on the heart, there is increased heart rate and increased contractility, causing increased stroke volume, and this means increased cardiac output. Increased sympathetic stimulation to the blood vessels 
It too was a construction of the non-vital organs vessels, such as the skin, muscle, kidneys, the IT, and lungs, ending in pallor, leguria, capnia, nausea and vomiting, etc. The blood vessels of vital organs, such as the brain and heart, escape this vasoconstriction, trying to maintain blood flow to these vital organs. Other measures include endocrine response. The renin hormone is released by the ischemic kidney. The renin activates the angiotensin system. The angiotensin is a potent vasoconstrictor and stimulates the secretion of the aldosterone by the adrenal cortex, which results in sodium and water retention. Also, the antidiuretic hormone, or the vasopressin, is released by the posterior pituitary, and this hormone leads to water retention. The clinical picture of hemorrhage depends upon the amount and rate of blood loss, as well as the cardiovascular reserve status. In general, all the manifestations are due to hypovolemia and reduced tissue perfusion. As regards the mental status, there is a slow speech, confusion, agitation, and restlessness. The patient is alert to the end. The patient complains of thirst with coldness sensation and becomes hypothermic. The skin is pale and cold with clammy sweating. The patient is tachycardic and complains of palpitation, which is awareness of the heartbeat. Blood pressure is maintained in the early stages with failure of compensation. A drop of pressure starts to occur. The kidneys hear the compensatory mechanisms and manifest by leguria, which is a reduced urine output. Treatment of hemorrhage comprises two main issues. Number one, stopping of the hemorrhage, and number two, restoring the blood volume. The following is the different measures to stop bleeding. The first aid include position, raising the limb with a bleeding wound above the heart level, helps to reduce the blood loss by the effect of gravity. This usually controls the venous bleeding. Pressure and packing. Any clean, soft lining cloth or dressing can be used to apply pressure to a bleeding wound and be removed in operation theater. Local pressure is effective in controlling venous or capillary bleeding. Balloon tamponade is used to control bleeding viruses by a sunstaken tube. Another example is posthemorrhoidectomy bleeding. Backing may be the only way to control secondary hemorrhage. Tourniquet. It is a pressure bandage applied proximal to the bleeding side to control the arterial blood flow through the wound should be applied for a limited time as a first aid. Longer the application may lead to ischemia and gangrene, so it is better to limit its use. Operative methods. A theater, any bleeding point must be controlled except minimal capillary ooze. Different methods are used. For example, mechanical methods. By application of a hemostat at the bleeding point, then the vessel is dealt with by ligature, underlying suture, or transfixation, depending on the size of the severed vessels. A thermicoagulation is an alternative in dealing with small size vessel injury. Vessel repair is justified in special situations. Mechanical methods also include digital pressure for three to five minutes, and this can control capillary or venous bleeding. Breaking the wound by gauze or dressing may be the only alternative to stop bleeding. Bone wax is used to control bleeding from bony cavities.
Thermal methods can be used. A dental furniture can be heated with a flame and applied to the bleeding point. Electrocautery is to use electricity to produce heat, whether by mono or bipolar instruments. Freezing or cryosurgery is a thermal method where extreme coldness is produced by liquid nitrogen. It may be used to stop bleeding in hemangiomas. Hemorrhage can be stopped by chemical methods. For example, adrenaline 1 to 1,000 solution is applied to the bleeding surface by means of a soaked gauze with adrenaline to produce local vasoconstriction. Local hemostatic agents may be used, for example, surgery cell, oxy cell, gel foam, fibrin glue, steptex, and astringents, etc. They are used to control capillary ooze. Other methods include argon laser photocoagulation and the use of new sealing devices such as harmonic scalpel and ligashore. The second main line of hemorrhage treatment is restoration of the blood volume. First, estimate the deficit. Withdraw a blood sample and send it to the lab for grouping and cross-matching. Start rapid IV infusion with a challenge dose of a crystallite solution better to be lactated linger using a white board. 16 Fogarty. This is to expand the circulation. The amount of estaloid given is calculated as three times the estimated deficit. Start blood transfusion once available if the hematocrit is less than 30%. If the blood is not available or the availability is delayed, Various substitutions can be used in place to buy time. For example, use the strand solution. Hemorrhage in oral surgery. Here are some pictures showing the bleeding after dental procedures. This photo shows irrigation of the wound with excess cell solution containing tranexamic acid to stop mild bleeding being an antifibrinolytic agent. You may apply a gauze soaked with adrenaline 1 to 1000 dilution to cause vasoconstriction. Application of suturing may be the best solution. Surgery cell can be also used to control oozing. Bone wax is molded and bagged at the site of bleeding from the alveolar margin. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was simple, clean, and to the point. If you are satisfied with the contents of this video, please give a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. Your subscription will be helpful for me to make much more videos. Please don't forget to hit the bell so you will be notified whenever I post a new video. Good luck. See you soon in next videos.